Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wait, no, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another Monday Morning Art Talk. <laughs> Today I want to talk about, oh, whoa, whoa, I need a shave here. Today I want to talk about um, some things that I read from this great article that came out um, for the Comic-Con edition on, um, a collector's edition, and it was featuring some great articles with Will Eisner. And if you guys aren't familiar with who Will Eisner is, and you want to do storyboard and comics, it is vital. It is vital that you know who this man is. It is vital that this man's legacy lives on for eternity. Um, he was one of the best of the best, and especially when it came to storytelling. And I highly recommend that you research him and look at his work and you'll be blown away. He falls into the, for me, the, he wasn't a Mad Magazine artist, but he you know, goes into the Jack Davis realm and the Mort Drucker realm and, and the, just the, the, the greats, the greats. And it's very important to learn from these. But when I was reading the article, um, I came across something that he had said um, that he repeated a lot. So I wanted to share that uh, with you guys. And there goes my hand as I just got to move this thing here. So I want to share that with you guys and just um, explain just a little bit about it. Um, so he described, what is this? Uh, I, I believe uh, four things that are vital to, to, to the essential artist for everyone to, to follow through with and understand and believe in and follow through with, okay? And this was it, okay? So number one was hard work. And hard work, you say to yourself, what is hard work? I'm drawing every day. What is hard work? It's like I, I put in a couple of hours, or I put in an hour and I do this and that. And the hard work, for me, in, in my interpretation of it, again, based on experiences that uh, for myself, just to develop myself, is the hard work of just putting in that time and, and effort into just drawing, just, just drawing and, and really, and really going down, you know, to it and really getting to the nuts and bolts. And, and I got to say something about this because again, my, my feel is that a lot of people want things in their life and they want to get into the studios and they want to do all these things, but they're not putting in the hard work and they're, you know, Oh, I grab a couple of this thing and I copy this and I draw from that. Okay. I'm done. I'm going to go off and play and watch binge, watch some TV now and do all this other stuff. And, and, and for those who want to seriously become good at what they do. This is why I love Will Eisner's stuff, Jack Davis, all these guys. These guys were draftsmen. These guys could draw like no tomorrow. There was a real sense of not just saying they knew anatomy, you know, but they understood how to draw the human form. They understood how to draw portraits and faces and they did that. And to me, this is the, the one of the biggest things that's lacking in a lot of uh, artists uh, today and all almost who want to get into this profession, they just kind of want to gravitate and, and maybe copy a specific character designer, but they don't realize the foundation of the hard work that character design has put in to be able to get to the point of drawing that. So they'll say like, I'll say, hey, you guys want to learn about head rotation? Nah, I don't want to learn about that. You know, I, let's just move on to show me just design. Or, hey, you guys want to learn about body language? Nah, let's skip the body language. I, you know, just show me how to design. And it's all these important, vital elements that are just people they just choose not to do or feel like, ah, that's, that's too much work. I don't want to have to go through all that to get to the result that I'm looking for. And that's 
By far the biggest mistake you're ever going to make in your whole career, um, and by improving upon your, your basic drawing skills, which I take pride in uh, trying to help people with, is getting you to that next uh, level of being able to then take those drawings and head drawings and everything else and mimic different styles and, and do all this and caricature. You know, I, I just got to say that I've never met, I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever met one great or good character designer that was not a good caricaturist. Never. If you don't know how to caricature, most likely you're not probably a good character designer because it, it just goes, it's just, it's just one in the same. And by having that knowledge and understanding of the human form and then putting in that hard work and that time is what it's going to take. And that hard work means giving up things, okay? So anyway, that was one of the things that he said. So um, hard work. Number two was skill. It's a no-brainer. You're not going to have any job in this industry, whether you go into advertising, entertainment, the animation industry, no matter what you want to do, if you don't have a skill set, and you may not be the best draftsman, but maybe you're a good storyteller, maybe you're a good uh, story writer, maybe you're great at writing, maybe you're good at just uh, your skill is at painting, your skill is at drawing props, your skill is at drawing mechanical things, your, whatever that the skill the skill, the skill, the skill is another essential vital element. As Will says, we got to have hard work and we got to have skill. And without that skill level, you cannot fool yourself. And if you want to keep moving up in the food chain, so to speak, and you want to be noticed and get from one place to the next, you have to develop your skill. And that's part of incorporating that hard work into that, which is going to get you better. And of course, how do you acquire skill? Do practice. Do practice in any profession, in any, I don't care if you want to be a golfer. I don't care if you want to be the best bike rider. I don't care if you want to do whatever it is you want to do, be the best chef. Through your perseverance, through your practice, through your trial and error, only then do you start to develop your skill level and get better and better through all those different failures and those different, uh, the, the, the trouble you go through and the trouble you face. So skill is again another vital essential. The third thing that he says, self-confidence. Self-confidence, you know, I just kind of wanted to tap into something with that, that um, another one of the greatest philosophers of, of in, this, in this world that, uh, that made his journey through here and has left it, but um, was the guy by the name of Napoleon Hill. I've talked about him before. But he talks about self-confidence, you know, as one, you know, many people talk about self-confidence, but it's a very important thing. But I thought this was interesting the way he puts the things, okay? Self-confidence. The development of self-confidence starts with the elimination of this demon called fear, which sits upon man's shoulders and whispers into his ear, you can't do it. You're afraid to try. You're afraid of public opinion. You're afraid that you're going to fail. You're afraid you have not the ability. See that? See how that's kind of crazy and stuff? Let me repeat that to you guys. He said, you fear the whispers in your ear that you can't do it. You're afraid to try. You're afraid of public opinion, and you're afraid that you will fail. You are afraid you have not the ability. This fear demon is getting into close quarters. Science has found a deadly weapon with which to put into the flight. And this lesson on self-confidence has brought you to this weapon for use in your battle with the word with the world old enemy of progress. Fear. The world old enemy of progress is fear. And he talks about the six major fears of mankind. The six major fears of mankind are the fear of poverty, the fear of old age, the fear of criticism, the fear of loss of love of someone, the fear of ill health, and the fear of death. Some powerful stuff, all right? So the self-confidence 
is just based on the fear. Again, these things that you're, you tell yourself that how other people are going to perceive you, how, what, it, oftentimes that's what it comes about, you know, because this to me is the major thing. The major fear is was how other people may perceive you. And whether in the industry, whether your friends, your colleagues, teachers, you, you, you name it. It's just this, this thing which stops you from making that next potential step, from makes you making that leap into doing what it is that you're even trying to do, to even going and getting your button gear and saying, you know, I'm tired of this situation. I'm tired of the way I'm being treated. I'm tired of these, whatever it is, you name it, that's going on. You name it, you claim it. What are you tired of? And then getting the cojones enough to say, you know, I'm going to try and I'm going to call that person. I'm going to meet with that person and I'm going to show my stuff and be prepared for what that person may say. If you're really willing to get their opinion and you want to get that job and you want to do something, but that this all comes with the self-confidence of oneself to keep moving forward, to keep Try and go for what it is that you even want in this life and that what you even desire. So you have to have the self-confidence because without it, you have nothing, nothing. And you say it about anything that's happened in your life and even again coming down to relationships. So you know if you're a male, female, whatever you are, if you don't have the self-confidence in yourself to go even ask that person on a date that you're eyeballing all the time, nothing's going to happen. Okay, so you name it. I don't care. Deal with people. The worst thing that people are going to say ever is no to you. And so what? Move on to the next thing. So what do we have so far from our good friend Will Eisner? Hard work. Skill. Self-confidence. First three major factors going on. The next thing he says, hustle. 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 You gotta have the hustle. You gotta have the uh, the drive, the hustle to just, I'm gonna work it. I'm gonna work it. I'm gonna be in front of people's faces. I'm gonna get out there. I'm gonna do the things that are just, again, scary to me. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna hustle it, man. I'm gonna, man, the, the hustle I did when I published my first book. Dang. It almost brings back, chills up my spine and just go, I, I honestly can't believe half the stuff that I've done when I've done it, but it's, I realize what happens in my life is every time I decide to do something, I get into that gear, I get into that hustle, you know, game, I, 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 I beat the, you know, go, you know, beat the walk, you know, whatever that phrase is, uh, you know, um, I'm just... I, I get out there and, I, and I, I do things and sometimes after it's all over, I go, dang, wh who was that? Who did I channel? What was that person inside me? I, and sometimes I don't even believe I can do it again, which is stupid because of course you can do it again. If you've done anything once, what's stopping you from doing it again? And the hustle I did when I had my first book, man, I was driving all over Los Angeles with my book that I self-published and going to every single bookstore and saying, can I speak to the book buyer? Uh, who's talking? Uh, my name's Steven Silver. I've published my own book. Hold on a second. And then a book guy comes in. What do you have? Yeah, I got this book. Blah, blah, blah. Hustling, hustling. When I was going and I was hustling and I was painting windows at Christmas time just because I wanted to be an artist and I wanted to draw. And I was hustling and I was painting. I went and I bought paint so I could paint on windows. And I went and hustled and I did that. I hustled when I went to, to just local stores in my hometown to see if they wanted me to draw a cartoon for their next advertisement for whatever they did. The hustle. 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 When I went around just to the different conventions and I met and talked to people before I was doing anything in the industry and just trying to meet with people and trying to get their opinion to hustle. Trying to find work all the freaking time. All the freaking time. It doesn't just come to you eventually. You're going to get to that point in your career when you build yourself up enough where people start to notice because you've hustled and you're out there enough to where people see what you do. You're, you're making your presence. You're showing yourself. You hustle. Okay. But remember what you got to have in order to hustle. Okay. You got to have the hard work behind you. You got to have the skill level behind you. 
okay? You gotta have the self-confidence behind you. And now you're gonna hustle. And the last thing that Will Eisner says here, I'm going crazy today. The last thing he has to say here is, you gotta have something to say. You gotta have something to say now. That's a tricky one. That's a tough one to have something to say. Who are you that you got something to say? What do you, what experiences do you have? What have you learned in life? Where have you been? What have you done? What other profession have you been in? That you're not even an artist, but maybe you are a security guard at some place. Maybe you've seen something horrible and tragic. Maybe you're going through something horrible and tragic in your own life, but maybe you got something to say about it. And you can say that in a, in a book form. You know, it's sort of like, that, that's the thing where people, these people that we admire in their work, it's why we admire it because, you know, besides just being, say, a humorous illustrator, where a lot of these guys, their profession was a humorous illustrator, and they, they're saying what other people are asking them to say, and it's almost as a character designer. What I'm saying, what I've always done, I'm just saying what other people have asked me to say. They've written it in form, and now I'm taking it and translating it into a visual communication through a character design. So I'm saying it in that way, but I feel like my purpose, what I'm saying is through teaching. So I make my books on teaching and I do all these things because I want something to say in that realm where I'm, I'm I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a comic book artist. I'm not, I'm not a comic strip artist. I don't have anything to say. I got nothing to say politically. I, I, I keep that, you know, to myself and watch everyone else go mad and crazy. And it's just like, you, you just, if you got something to say, maybe there's a communication and this is about hard work and trying to find that and not expecting people to give you the answers, but maybe you have something to say about that, okay? And I think that's important and it's going to come out in your artwork and that's where people might react to your work through that. So you're not just necessarily copying someone else's style and you're not just saying, well, um, because y you can't just be a, a Rockwell clone. It feels like Rockwell, Norman Rockwell said what he had to say. He said it through the communication, what he's doing. So just to copy what he's doing, well, it's a fine line to be drawn, but do you have something to say? I mean, these movie makers, they, they're, they're something special. These directors, they're something special. You know, we know who they are. And they're out there and they got something to say in their art form. Well, you got something to say even in your storyboarding, the way that you set it up and the way that you show that. Again, there's so many ways to say something, but again, it's a challenging way. You got something to say with your own art style, okay? So these are important things and it makes me think about, I remember, you know, my experience, uh, you know, just um, when I, there was something that stuck with me and again, maybe the Holocaust was on my mind because I just came back from Israel and, and I went through this whole experience and I was watching that, you know, learning more and more about it and was with a Holocaust survivor my whole tour and, and, and got into his mind and his head and learned so much and I was just like blown away. And then it made me realize about, remember that comic book, uh, it's called Mouse, M-A-U-S, um, which was about a mouse, these mice, but they're in, in the Holocaust environment and it was based on the guy who wrote it. I, I'm not going to say his name. It's begins with an S, Spiel, something. But anyway, he he wrote about his, I think, parents or grandparents' experience in the Holocaust, and he had something to say, and it, and, it, and it got this wild, you know, it was out there. And, you know, maybe there's, maybe you believe in animal rights. Maybe that's something. I just watched the most horrific documentary that I've ever seen in my life called, uh, by Joaquin Phoenix was doing the documentary, and it was called Earthlings, earthlings if you get a chance to watch it my god oh my i would have never thought i i've been a meat eater my whole life guys no more i no more and i was going dang if someone was great at drawing animals and wanted to tell a story in that sense wow that's something to say going into that realm so my, my, what I'm trying to say is these, these important things of having, having that story to tell. But again, what are we referring back to? We're referring to Will Eisner's things that he recommends in order to make it work as a career in this life. What you got to ha have is hard work, skill, self-confidence, hustle, and something to say. So think about following those in your life. Think maybe that's giving you something, some food for thought, something to think about. And that's it. Thanks again for watching. Um, I have a, uh, uh, this coming Wednesday 
If you guys want to come up to Simi Valley, up to where I got my drawing studio, and you want something to say, and you want to practice your skill, and you want to hustle and build up your self-confidence, come on out here. It's about 35-minute drive from wherever you're at. Look at my website under silvertoons.com under the events and you will see where it's listed. It's $10 for three hours. Come and sketch. Come out and draw with me. All right. There's only about four spots left, I think. So um, it depends who gets there first. Thanks again, guys. Make it a great week and I'll talk to you guys next week. Take care. Hello, this is Steven and I just wanted to tell you about this cool thing that I'm doing right now through my website at silvertoons.com. It's a Skype mentorship. In a sense, what I want to do is just talk to you, meet you, tell me about things that are happening in your life, see if there's anything that I could do to help you. I can look over your artwork, do your portfolio, and just maybe try to push you in the right direction that you want to take your life and your journey, all right? So you can go to silvertoons.com, go to classes, click on mentorship, and you can learn all about it. We can try to arrange a time, set up a date. It doesn't matter where you live in the world. Um, and I just wanted to make it just very affordable just to open it up because I love doing this. I love meeting people from all over the planet. It's a really cool thing. And uh, with this technology, why not? So that's it. Thanks. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Ha, ha, ha.